Alrighty, welcome back everyone. It is Laughing Games here. I'm back with another StarCraft 2 1 vs. 1 replay cast. I'm excited to get on into this one. We've got ourselves a Terran vs. Zerg on the map Parasite, and it's going to be a very high level Terran vs. Zerg. It's probably two of the greatest players of their race, really. Spawning down the bottom right hand side of the map, it's the Zerg player. It's Gosu Cruz Dark. And spawning up the top left hand side of the map, it's Splice TY. TY already moving out with what looks like it's going to be a proxy here, so two SCVs moving out. So uh, TY, a very infamous two racks proxy player. But uh, no, the map is on Parasite, and this is a replay from the IEM qualifiers. So uh, yeah, we'll see how uh, this one's going to go. I mean, uh, Dark is going to be on the receiving end of this proxy two racks. And he is going to be going for a, a hatchery first, so... It really can depend whether a Zerg scouts this on actually whether they just, you know, straight up win or lose the game. Looks like that uh, Dark, though. Is he actually just going to find out about this? Is Overlord's queued up? Where's that pathing going? And it looks like it is actually perfectly queued up to where TY is going to be proxying, so... I mean, this is going to be a massive heads up for Dark. He's just still going to have to react to it, though, because... The Overlord's getting on in here, but the barracks is already done. Just about the first one anyway, so Dark not really going to be able to stop this, so we'll see how he reacts, of course. It's not like he can, uh, it's not like he can just, uh, yell at his, uh, spawning pool to make it build quicker or anything like that, so he's still got to play within the constraints of his opening. Although Dark, I mean, he sends out one drone, maybe looking for an SCV building a bunker, but then, uh, actually just, oh, he actually just goes for a third base behind this. So that's interesting out of Dark. I mean, he definitely knows that he's being two racks here. Sending out a drone maybe to uh, shoo that SCV away. But, oh, okay, for Dark, this could actually really hurt. And Overlord going to be coming under fire. One of the Marines has found it here. Just going to be uh, shooting at that purple spiky balloon in the sky. And uh, that is a uh, dead pufferfish right there. So that's a nasty move to Dark as uh, this game starts off. He's going to be supply block. Has to make another Overlord before he can make anything else. And... Defenses like these are incredibly close, so this really is going to hurt Dark not being able to produce any more lings or anything like that. He hasn't started another Overlord, so he's just actually pulling the drones pull with his couple of lings here. He's going to be trying to chase these Marines back, but I don't think this is going to work. This five or six Marines for TY here is the perfect number. I mean, uh, just drones can't fight that many Marines. The bunkers are now up, so it looks like Dark may be losing a hatchery here. I mean, he has the extra one building, but it's not done yet, so we'll see if uh, T.Y. actually scouts that out or not, because, I mean, uh, that could be under fire too. Dark is the one spine crawler that you can maybe move forward, but there's no way he saves this hatchery at this point, right? And uh, definitely not, as that hatchery does indeed go down. Does uh, T.Y. stop or does he keep going on here? I mean, he's got double gas on the way behind this. He has stopped producing marines, and there we go. All those barracks are now starting to fly on back. So T.Y. has made up his mind as to what he's going to do. It's not like he's going to just try and push in and kill Dark, which is probably a good decision when the Zerg has a spine crawler. But, I mean, uh, he still killed off the hatchery. However, I mean, Dark does have up this extra hatchery here. So we may just uh, see Dark try and macro out of this or... I don't know, sometimes Zerg players will follow this up with an all-in, but there's no Roach War and there's no Baneling Nest on the way yet, but Dark is mining gas still, so it's always a possibility. However, uh, it looks like uh, the Spine Crawler will be forcing that one bunker to salvage. T.Y. could be getting his 75 minerals back, so not costing much that bunker anyway. However, uh, T.Y. does uh, pull everyone out of that bunker, starts to salvage it. And, uh, oh, will this one marine scout this, uh, scout this hatchery? Yes, he will. I mean, he sees the creep, so TY should know about that now. So he knows that Dark actually just sort of countered this proxy by going for his own greed. I mean, which is very risky to do because if the, the Terran just really wanted to commit and kill you, Dark might have been in a very poor spot. But no, he made the call to start that third hatchery. And suddenly, if we look at it, he's on a good worker count. He's able to saturate this brace pretty quick, and then he starts up his third, so... Dark may actually just be fine behind this. I mean, he's going to be trying to chase down and catch some of these Marines, but TY did keep all of his Marines alive, so they're going to be very safe. Lings are getting actually gunned down, so maybe not the best trade for Dark there. Nine Lings for what? He got three Marines there, so, I mean, I guess. I mean, not a massive trade or anything like that, but, 
I mean, TY, he does have a third CC on the way behind this, doing the standard Terran. My proxy didn't work build, so now I got to uh, try and make up for that. And uh, Dark's not really looking to punish him. He's just macroing up. Like, look at this. Dark, he's lost his hatchery. Yeah, but he's he's fine. He's just walking it off. Already at 40 drones. A little bit supply blocked here, which is hurting him a bit. It starts up four overlords. But, uh... Yeah, now, uh... It's natural hatchery on the way up. Oh, TY sent one of his barracks out, gonna be scouting out, so maybe this means TY is gonna be playing mech, although he, we'll see, I mean, he's making the Hellions, he's got a Banshee on the way with Cloak, and but he's sending out yet another barrack, so TY, okay, maybe TY is gonna be playing mech this game. The proxy into the mech style, I mean, TY has been known to play some of those more sort of out there styles, and he could be doing that this time versus Dark. Medivac's moving across the map right now. Medivac's going to be boosting right on into the natural. Meanwhile, these Hellions are sharking about looking for a run by the classic one, too. It looks like TY is going to try and pick off an Overlord to start things off, and he will get that. So Dark's actually lost a few Overlords this game. But uh, now TY is just going to be picking off a Spore Crawler. Actually kills it off. Maybe he can get a drone or two, but he does decide to back on out. You know, all his scouting barracks just casually la di da -di dying right on over Dark Space, hanging out. There's another one flying in from the left, so it's kind of like an invasion of barracks. But uh, for now, TY just poking around with his units. He's got double armory on the way behind this. So, I mean, any doubt that this isn't going to be mech is, is gone. I mean, TY, he, he plays out there a little bit, but uh, not that much, I don't think. So, TY, I mean, he does start a tech lab. I don't know if that's just like to fake out Dark or just to swap over his factory onto. Because that overboard's now dead. But Dark can probably assume it's mech at this point. Although these marines, they're now wandering on, wandering away home. And these barracks taking a bit of a beating, distracting this uh, queen squad. I mean, uh, TY, like, he's just got his marines out on the map. He had a few hellions somewhere. Well, uh, ten is a, more than a few, but they're back at home for now. He's actually sending some of them out. Now, a Banshee's actually found this hatchery. TY made the one Banshee, but from the looks of it, he cancelled Cloak, so just trying to work away on this hatchery, and is he gonna get it? I mean, it's getting low, but the two queens come in with an Overseer, so... That Banshee, not a chance of it getting this hatchery. However, TY, he's coming in with his Marines. I mean, this hatchery is low, but there's three queens here to defend it, and he's actually just right-clicking on the hatchery. I mean, he injured it before. Eight Marines put out a fair bit of damage, but... Oh, uh, can they get away? I mean, that Medivac's injured if it comes on in. Yeah, TY knows that it'll just be focused down by Dark, so those eight Marines give their life to pick off a hatchery. Although I think that was a pretty decent trade from Dark... Trade from uh, TY, pardon me. As he's playing mech, so it's not like he needs those Marines. As morbid as that sounds, uh, they're disposable. And uh, now that uh, Medivac gets on out of there to tell the tale, but I mean, we're now seeing TY moving out with these Hellions. He's got a Raven with this, so he's playing like his full-on mech style over uh, Dark going into a Spire behind this. TY scanned it, though. Has an Engineering Bay on the way, so doesn't have to worry too much, I don't think. Mine's on the way, Thor's on the way. So uh, TY just macroing up, loading one of these Thors into his Medivac. And uh, then just uh, trying to be on guard for whatnot. Where did his barracks go? Okay, TY still has two barracks. One flying out over here. He's now getting up a few missile turrets. Dark Dark's gone for a double expansion, so after a crazy proxy three wax, we're heading into a normal a normal game, guys, here. Like uh, TY just macroing up and playing mech, whereas Dark confident just saying, like, yeah, I'm not pressured at all. So he's just double expanding, getting up his upgrades, which are behind that a TY who's already gonna have one one, so. That's going to make TY's ground army pretty scary for Dark to deal with, but... Okay, these mutas flying around, picking off an SCV. Picks off actually two from the look of it, and then, uh... TY, though, going to send them packing. It's not like Dark is committed to, like, 30 mutas or anything. I 
Dark sending in a couple of Banelings here. They're actually just rolling across the map. One of them's a little bit in the lead there. Does TY realize that this is coming? He's gonna have to react. Look at this, Dark just queued up some Banelings to run on into TY's base, but looks like a good reaction by TY. Nothing happening there. Dark just been like, yeah, I got a few Lings. Let's make a few Banelings and give this thing a shot. Unfortunately for him, that doesn't quite look out. Looks like his Widow Mines might have actually got a connection here. I mean, I almost missed them there, but no, they're, they were hanging out at the back there, so those Mutas might have had himself a bit of a tough time. Uh, two Mutas gone down, and two very guilty Widow Mines looking around there. But as far as those little skirmishes go, nothing too major happening. Both these players just macroing up. TY's up on supply. Dark's got himself a very healthy worker count, though. He's getting up all of his sort of tech. He's getting up Vipers. He's got a Hive done, getting up a Greater Spire even. And uh, Broodlords are generally what Zerg wants to trend towards versus Mech. But we'll see how TY is going to play this, because you never know what exactly TY is going to do when he's playing. And he is a player who tries and experiments with the late game a lot of, a lot of the time. So uh, we'll see. I mean, uh, Dark just continuously spreading his creep and whatnot. TY's got his 2-2 on the way. Meanwhile, uh, that is a lot of Hellions out for TY. That is a NASCAR amount of Hellions just driving around. The map is just one giant track. Oh, look at that. The Raven, though, allowing TY to clean up creep is kind of cute. Looks like some Hydras are actually coming forward. Raven might actually get caught there. Stays alive, but throws out an anti-armor missile. TY actually just engaging these Hydras with his Hellions. A few Lings come forward and end will force them back. So uh, nicely done there. Hellion's gonna be uh, getting pushed on back. Liberator, harassment going down for TUI at dark space. Mutas come back and we'll clean this up. That Liberator actually had a fair few kills to his name. But uh, as far as everything goes this game, no major amount of damage has been done. Like, if we look at the resources lost, it's not a ton so far because these players have just been investing in these big armies. We're now seeing nine Corruptors on the way for Dark, so probably going to be looking to get up those Broodlords, whereas TY is more command centers on the way. That one not quite on location, interestingly enough. Okay, that's because he's building two, of course. Good old TY. One CC, not enough CCs. It's a known fact that they get lonely, so uh, you always have to have them in pairs. But uh, Pathogen Glands on the way. 2-2 on the way here for Dark. Then, uh, yeah, he's just advancing in with his tech. TY, though, is coming in here. It looks like there's been a bit of a fight. I mean, as he's uh, moving in with his tanks, getting set on up. Hellion's poking forward. And uh, there we go, that Raven allowing this creep to be cleaned up. So Dark may be losing the base as TY steps forward with a good number of tanks. Maybe uh, TY catching Dark a little bit before he hit what tech he wanted to because he's getting into these blue boards, which uh, I'm not sure that... TY will be able to answer, but TY's at least going to be getting this base, which is a nice pickoff. And uh, Dark staying back for now. I mean, uh, he's going to have five Broodlords done in a second. Here comes uh, TY poking forward. A lot of Hellions eating some Banelings. But uh, no, he's just rolling forward, setting up more tanks. But does he have enough anti-air anti, anti uh, to deal with these Broodlords? Throwing down some auto turrets. Viking's going to be trading on out, but TY may have to back up right now. These Broodlords really require... A proper response. It doesn't look like TY has that, so he's just got to unsiege and retreat out with everything. TY back at home. He's getting into his 3 3, so he's got very serious upgrades, but Cyclones, Vikings on the way are apparently how he's going to try and deal with these Broodlords, with these Corruptors that are given air dominance to his opponent. Raven's going to be getting picked off. That hurts. I mean, Dark knows that he's got this air control, these Corruptors, really with free reign right now. TY saying, all right, I can't deal with that. So he's going to be going for a counterattack. A lot of tanks, a lot of Hellions moving down to the south side of the map. And that will be enough to draw Dark on back. However, uh, I mean, these Hellions are still committing. This is a ton of Hellions here for TY. And a uh, tank or two rolling in with them, but it's like uh, they will be retreating. Three spines on the way, Dark getting up his static defense, which is something I love to see, but the main thing is TY bought himself a lot of time in this spot right now. I mean, Dark has this sort of scary army composition, and TY has to sort of come up with a way to deal with this mass corruptor that's supporting the Broodlords, and it is tough for Terran to come up with a response to that. Cyclone's now moving forward, though. TY, that's one way you can try and deal with a Zerg like this. It's just hitting them in multiple places, because the Broodlords definitely are immobile. And, uh, 
Now, uh... Here comes in, uh, these... Tanks, Cyclones moving in once more. Uh, I'm not sure they're gonna be getting too much done though. Lots of Brutal Lords in position. Cyclones, stepping on back. Three three is on the way for Dark, so he's getting up in his upgrades. But Ty will have his three three done before his opponent. He's getting up a ton of CCs, so I mean he is playing this late game, Terran versus Zerg. And I know I've cast a lot of TBZs lately, guys, but this is definitely. I mean, like we're seeing a lot of Terrans that are trying this sort of late game style. Alta varying amounts of success. Ty is going to nab off another hatchery of Dark. He's moving in once more. Tanks are going to be getting set up. Although uh, these blue boards should be able to deal with this. Some drones going to eat some shots there, but. Yeah, these brutes will deal with the tanks. Now, uh, Dark got some Corruptors. Oh, this is very nice for Dark. Actually, just using Caustic Spray on this. Uh, corruptors are being chased back. Cyclones, Vikings, gonna be picking off a few of them. But uh, base in the right-hand side actually gets killed off or canceled. And uh, TY gonna try and rebuild that, but the problem's still there. I mean, uh, these Corruptors, they're eyeing that up. How long until they're off cooldown? Dark can probably just take that out again, so. TY, he's just in build CC mode. Now, uh, Hellion's moving in. So, I mean, TY, he's trying to hit Dark everywhere. But there's a point in a StarCraft 2 game in which it really doesn't matter what race you play, in which you can afford to absorb damage. And Dark is reaching this point. Yes, TY's picking off hatcheries, but Dark's still going to be at 200 200 supply. He's still going to have at least a few bases up. So, TY may need to get something more done because this style works when your opponent's already down on supply say, having a tough time maxing out or really formulating a response, but Dark has all the tools. He's got a decent bank, so yes, while he's taking damage, I mean, uh, T.Y., he, he really needs to land some hard blows if he's actually going to really bring Dark down to a manageable size. Because just look at this, Dark. He's not one really to skip a beat. I mean, he's just on point with all of his defense. These infestors actually a little bit exposed there. Throws down some fungal growths. Looks like they will be getting caught out. Banelings roll forward, though, collect connect with a lot of those cyclones. I mean, uh, T.Y. is actually coming forward with a fair bit of his army here. And I mean, uh, Dark, he's now actually fallen in supply a little bit. He's burned through most of his bank. T.Y. though. Okay, so now uh, these cyclones gonna pick off this hatcher. I mean, I said Dark, like I was talking about how Dark mana has been pretty solid here. I mean, he has now dipped below 200 supply for a bit, but I mean, he's still got a pretty solid income, but when compared to that, a TY is actually, it's not the most solid income because TY is clearly dropping that mule hammer all on over if we look at his income. Surging over 4k for a time there. So uh, that is, that's, that's some serious money right there. But, uh, now we see, I mean, uh, Dark's, like, he's maxed out again. TY, like, he's getting this harassment off, but eventually at the end of the day, you do have to deal with the big army. Eventually Dark will pretty much, uh, cross all his T's and dot all of his I's as far as defense goes. For now, the T.Y., he's just being really relentless. He wants to try and make this harassment work, because that's how he knows how to bring down a Zerg player. Now, uh, these Corruptors at the back here, Dark Scott and Fester to support them. I mean, uh, we'll see. Are these Corruptors just going to move in? Cyclones are waiting to get their lock-ons going down. Parasitic Bomb being dropped on one of these uh, Liberators, having a bit of a tough time there. But uh, when the Broodlords get on in, that may be all that uh, Dark needs to dislodge this army. Anti-armor missiles going down. Corruptors are now engaging in. Cyclones are getting their locks off, but Fungal Growth is being thrown down. Corruptors are engaging this army of TY, and yeah, TY is going to be pushed back. Dark's army holding superior there, able to uh, send his opponent back. Feelings trying to chase down what units remain, but uh, the Liberators getting picked off. These Cyclones are uh, going to be getting picked off. It's tough to kite with Cyclones versus Hydras. TY is doing his best, but... I mean, while this was going on, he doesn't skip a beat, this guy. He is working away on this hatchery, and he may be able to pick it off. He's trying his best. The lock-on goes down. Dark does actually lose that hatchery. Meanwhile, these other hatcheries were having a bit of harassment going on. So, T.Y., continuous with the harassment. But, I mean, uh, yeah, like, uh, Dark staying alive. He's got a big enough army. And that was actually a pretty costly engagement for T.Y., I feel. It looks like uh, now Dark may be sort of turning things on to his opponent. These Broodlords are now moved in, and T.Y. needs a response to this, when really he doesn't have one. I mean, he's making Cyclones and Liberators, but that's not really an engaged Broodlord type of unit. 
So uh, Dark, probably just gonna, or TY, pardon me, probably just gonna have to abandon the space. Corruptor's even getting in on it. This planetary is under a barrage of fire. And of course, though, TY, like Clockwork, moving in, gonna be going for some counter harass, but he loses the base, yes, but how many of Darks is he able to kill? Cyclones lock onto this base right now. And uh, Dark just being pulled out of position, and Infestor pops out on the wrong side of town, tosses down a fungal growth before dying, but, uh, I mean, uh, Dark has to bring everything back to deal with this. Corruptor's being locked on by these Cyclones, definitely hurts. A good fungal growth going down for Dark, though, catches a lot of these Liberators, catches a lot of these Cyclones, so that's gonna be another costly loss for TY. And, uh, I feel like I hammer this in every late-game Terran versus Zerg that I cast. It all comes down to resources lost, guys, if you're playing a late game, and so far, Dark managing to surge ahead. He was behind a little bit, but from this point on, Zerg generally does take the more efficient trades, so TY, like, he can keep harassing Dark, but unless he actually manages to kill him and get him out of this game, trading like this isn't necessarily the best idea. And uh, if we look at TY's supply, he has now fallen. Dark's staying alive so far. Hellion's moving in on the map. Gonna be running into some Broodlords, so I don't think they're gonna have the most success. TY is gonna be losing all of those, and he needs an army that can deal with this sort of mass, mass air Zerg plus Broodlords. Uh, Dark coming in once again, also harassing, picks off one of these bases, forces it to lift off. He's now heading to the right side. This is a planetary, but can't hold on here. I mean, a lot of Hydras are coming on in. SCV's not repairing it. There we go, now they're going to be trying their best, but this is going to be a lot of Hydra DPS. I'm not sure this command center is going to stay alive. TY moving in with the Cyclones, looking to catch some of the Corruptors. He actually catches a fair few of them. And now he's maybe looking to engage the Hydras, but he does eat a pretty nasty Fungal Growth Dark coming in. He's even got more Infestors, going to be catching more of these Cyclones. And uh, with the rest of these units coming in, I'm not sure that TY has an answer just to this pure bulk of Hydra that Dark has decided to make at this stage in the game. I mean, uh... Hydras, they have a lot, they, they're pretty good straight up units as far as everything's concerned. So when it just comes down to playing, to going against what TY is playing, which is like uh, just Psycho and Hellion, I mean, the Hydras win out. There's no doubt about that. Did TY, was that Ling off position? Hold on, guys. We see that little Ling hanging out there. Now, it uh, looks like TY going for more harassment with his Liberators here. But the problem is, like, unless your opponent doesn't have a bank, harassment, like, unless your opponent doesn't have a bank, harassment's not going to work out because, yeah, you cost Dark a little bit of money, but the amount you're throwing at him costs you more. So if we look at the resources lost, TY just losing out here. Down about uh, 6, 7k resources. He's trying to secure another base, but, like, his own big bank has gone out. He's down on supply heavily. He's going to try and hang on here. He's been teching into BCs. But uh, with Infestors out, they really do shut down this battle cruiser. These two BCs moving out on the map, but uh, does uh, does Dark deal with this in time? Here come these BCs. They're going to be getting some harassment done. I mean, BCs are a good form of harassment because they can generally harass and then get on out. Yamato Cannon goes down on this base. TY, he scans. He sees the Infestors. He needs to teleport out before he gets fungal, and he does just in time there. Tempting fate with those BCs, but that is a good form of harassment for Terran. As long as you don't lose the BCs, it's high risk, high efficiency as far as everything's concerned. Now here comes in TY looking to pick off another base. I mean, he's starting to build up in supply. Once again, he's starting to secure some more of these bases with some of his extra orbital commands but and uh, command centers. But yeah, I mean, uh, we'll see. Dark still has this monstrous army that TY will eventually have to deal with. And... Apparently TY's way of dealing with this is going to be mass BCs. We'll see if Dark takes this threat really seriously enough, but Infestors are pretty good versus battle cruisers. There's not as many Corruptors as I think Dark really needs. He could maybe do with a few more if, say, he trades out some of his Hydras or something, but, I mean, uh, Dark still has an absolutely monstrous army. Here comes in the Zerg player. Looks like he may be looking to snuff out another one of TY's bases. TY just resecured this base, trying to mine everything that he can. TY may be looking to make his last stand, knowing that he needs to hold on to this base, but uh, he's on the fence about whether to engage or not. He's testing the waters. He sees all those infestors. He's going for a lot of the auto cannons being dropped, but ah, uh, there's so many infested Terran being thrown down. Anti-armor missile has been dropped, but that is so many infested Terran with their high anti 
anti-air damage, those rockets being fired by those infested Terran. TY's army is just falling. I mean, he got a lot of Yamato cannons off, cleaned out the corruptors, but the ground army is still too strong for Dark. The Hydras, the infested Terrans, able to get enough done. TY, having enough though, decides to go for a Hail Mary teleport almost, just saying like, all right, I know your army's out of position now. So he's coming on in, he's gonna right click on that hatchery, pick that off. Maybe gonna be looking for another, so I mean, he's getting a bit of counter damage done, trying to take the heat off himself. But uh, TY really is starting to run out of money here. He's lost so many command centers this game. Just uh, Dark has been consistent in picking these off. Dark does have to get on home if he wants to deal with these BCs. And uh, TY knows that he may have overstayed his welcome a little bit. He's just got to get on out of there. I mean, uh, Dark, though, he loses a base or two, but he's still got that bank. He's secured another one going up. He just, like, uh... You can knock a Zerg over if you harass like this for TY, but Dark's just been too solid. He hasn't let that snowball happen. Like, uh, we've seen Terran make work in some other games. And this one, though, I mean, uh, Dark, though, just doing what he needs to do. <laughs> Look at all that static defense, by the way. He does not want to deal with, say, BCs or Cyclone runbys. That uh, TY has consistently been doing, and... Uh, We'll see. I mean, uh, TY's trying to secure another base, but Dark consistent leaving units at those locations. There we go. TY dropping the mule hammer. Going to be trying to get some of this income back up, and that'll certainly help supplement his income. So, I mean, uh, he's got higher income than Dark for now. But uh, Dark hasn't really let TY consistently mine from these bases as long as he'd like to. Now, uh, here comes in this army again. Lots of Hydras, a couple Banelings in there. TY is trying to pull his opponent's attention out of place, and he is doing a good job with the BCs. He's building more and more of them. So, I mean, the BCs, they can always get trades off. That can be effective as long as you avoid the main army, but in a head-up heads up fight, I don't see it really working for TY. Now, here comes in these BCs. They're going to try and queue up Yamato cannons and teleport out, and they do actually all get off their Yamato cannons and then teleport on out. So, I mean, uh, that's a fair few infestors, or corruptors, pardon me, that died, but, I mean, uh, here comes in the Hydras. They're going to be looking to pick off another command center, and that costs TY, and he really needs to be efficient from this point on. He's behind about 5, 6k resources, and you guys may be saying... Why do you keep hammering on this efficiency thing? Like, TY, he's taken good battles and stuff, but at the end of the day, there's only so much money on the map, guys. And, uh, TY, he's just, uh, just not trading too efficiently here. And if you're gonna play the late game, it's a lot better to be the player who's being the efficient one. Because, uh, in that case, the ball's really in your court. And what TY, he is keeping this base up. It really is his lifeline being able to mule this. Just, uh, keep that steady income there but uh, at the end of the day he does eventually have to deal with this big old zerg army dark's just been playing really the defensive game trying to put out the fires that ty has been lighting and so far he's done a good job of that ty is coming on in here lots of liberators set up hellbats are moving forward but is there enough sort of anti broodlord here i mean uh i mean maybe there's a chance if ty say gets yamato cannons off on all of the broodlords it's possible he can make this work but there is a lot of corruptors here for Dark, Yamato cannons being queued up. Anti-armor missiles going down. These BCs are going to put out a lot of damage versus this army, but the Corruptors also deal a high number of damage versus the BCs, which are now having to teleport out as they get injured. They're not teleporting too far away, though. Can TY actually take this fight? Doesn't look like it. There's just a few too many Corruptors, I think, in this one Infester actually stealing one of his own battle cruisers there. It's no longer on his side. And uh, as that runs out, maybe, I mean, it's actually a pretty darn close fight here. Both these players lost a lot of units. TY, he's kept a fair few of his BCs alive. What is Dark making? He's making eight more Corruptors, so, I mean, this final fight a lot closer than I honestly thought it would be. This BC has to be careful. It's trading out versus Infested Terran. TY has kept a lot of these injured units alive. He's got to be careful. He's picking off the Broodlords. Is TY going to be able to do this, cleaning up the army? Gets the Yamato Cannon off. I'd like to see some mules drop or something to be able to repair up these battle cruisers because TY needs to keep them alive before, the, say, the next round of Corruptors gets on in. Dark has managed to squeeze out nine, another seven on the way, and that is a very serious number thanks to uh, Dark managing to keep these bases online. He is able to remax pretty quickly and get up a very significant army. Uh, okay, these BCs are being, uh, being repaired, though. This makes me breathe a sigh of relief for TY. Dark, though, I mean... Doesn't want to give TY all the time in the world, so he's getting these Corruptors out. He's going to be stepping forward once again. Yamato Cannon on cooldown still, and here's the three Broodlords 
Does TY have enough? He may just have to abandon this base. He's got he's repairing these BCs as quickly as he can before the fight. There's a lot of corruptors out once again for Dark. 16 in total. There's a Raven with an anti-armor missile, perhaps, but I don't think five BCs is enough to beat 16 corruptors. A teleport goes down for TY. Okay, he knows it's desperate, it's desperate time, so he's going for another one of these counterattacks. How is Dark going to react to this? He's going to pick off this command center that's flying. Ling's harassing to the top right. So, I mean, TY's economy has been devastated here. And now Dark really does just need to deal with these battle cruisers. The BC's locking onto a base. But uh, they are really committed here. They don't have teleport to escape. So, he's going to get these two these two bases. But, uh, I mean, uh, these corruptors are now looking for these BCs. And I think their days are numbered here. Uh, here they come on in. I think he's just got a Yamato cannon and hope for the best. There we go, queuing up the Yamatos, knowing that these BCs are overcommitted. TY made the move that he thought was best, but these battle cruisers are all going to be going down, and he knows it's over. GG, a crazy end to that game. Like, I was hammering on how Dark's in a pretty good spot, and he did end up taking that game, but TY, that final fight, it was looking kind of close. Anyway, thanks so much to everyone for tuning on in. There's, like, some background noise going on there, but, uh... I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let's try and hit 25 likes on this one for this epic Terran versus Zerg. Otherwise, I shall see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.